Hey guys, Lancer here. Hope everyone's doing well. Thanks again for joining me while I go through some secret layers of shenanigans. Let's get to it. So, I did a box opening before, in the past, at some point, um, which was to open up the extra life secret layers. I was okay at that time because i was excited to open up the box i'll link the video below it was fun to open it up it felt pretty crisp but the problem is i didn't ask for pringles and yet at the same time after paying 60 dollars australian that would have been an extra 20 30 percent on top of that not including shipping yeah that was actually an expensive purchase and the problem is that I have purchased more secret layers since then. Now, they take a while to come through. They take a lot longer than you'd think, especially with all this stuff that's been happening. So when I got mine, I was excited to open it. I even have one that I have not opened that I just wanted to keep along in case I either wanted to sell it back because obviously secret layers, they, they don't get printed that often. And in the future, maybe open it up and put, it, put some of the cards in another deck. Now, the problem is that the quality of the cards is my biggest main issue. Now, I know the Tolarian Community College and others have done videos on the fact that there's a lot of secret layers coming out, and most of them are just going to be hard to purchase. They got that fear of missing out factor. They're limited time. They, people buy them in bulk, and then the prices don't go up as expected, and then people start losing money. Prices come down, everyone freaks out. I'm sure that's the future. I've told it before that the more people that know about an investing strategy, the less it's likely the less it's likely to work. If everyone buys in expecting the price to go up, then the last thing that the price is going to do is actually go up because everyone's doing it. Everyone's trying to sell to someone else. That's not how the world works. Usually the world works in ways that, you know, someone doesn't see a potential then they can profit on it. If everyone thinks they can profit on it, everyone's going to lose. Now, here's the problem. This, I'm trying to show it. This is a flattened out secret layers. Teferi's Protection. Oh, sorry. Oh, God. That's terrible. Uh, anyways, Teferi's Protection. I've got all, all of them. I even got an, a, a Johnny as my glass, um, glass pen pain foil so all good and all good fun but the problem is i've ordered almost another 400 dollars of these or something like normally i wouldn't care about disclosing that but some of these are actually worthwhile because the cards in them are worthwhile but if they're going to look like this when they come out when a normal foil should be flat and i think our rudy has actually mentioned that the foiling on both sides don't call it, cause it to curve because it has it pulls on both sides at the same time. It flattens it out. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. They need to figure out what is going on with these cards and why they keep curling like this. Because when you're paying actual money, you know, you work for the money and you expect something that's actually going to be a good quality. Some of these can be put into modern deck. I got a collected company right here. Yeah, that's a modern playable card. And, you know, if, if, if it looks like this, there's a chance that it might not be allowed in a modern deck because it's going to stand out from the rest of your deck. So I got a lot of annoyances with the thing, and I'm going to keep track of it. I'll let you guys know as well as they start turning up the the ones that I have ordered. And I'm going to keep an eye on the quality, but I don't know what Wizard, Wizards of the Coast can do with these when they've printed out so many of them and they're already out. They're, they're already out. Like, they can't just say, oh, yeah, send them all back in and we're going to reprint them better. I mean, would they do that? <laughs> I don't think they would. That's a lot of money right there. So, I my problem is not really with the amount of secret layers because they aren't... The secondary market is taken into account, but they don't obviously acknowledge it. They keep the prices as something that does not affect the prices that have already been out there. The alternative art is pretty cool. There's usually a theme. It, it's all good in some ways, except for the business model of bad quality and the potential for them to start going straight to the secondary market. But that only should matter for people that are starting to invest in these. And we already have figured out that investing in things that Wizards of the Coast can reprint 
is really hard to predict and hard to figure out. And a lot of people are really 50-50, even in my comment section, people are not up for investing because they want more people to play the games. Totally understand that. That's the reason why I mostly buy one of each card because then I can figure out what commander decks I want to put it in, what else I want to do. It's only when you start buying four of each and they're very popular cards and you want to play it because you want to get into a certain standard like meta or modern or you know these kinds of things where you're like if i get this card it's worked for the last 10 years and yeah it hasn't been reprinted but it's an expensive card and then a, a year down the line it gets reprinted and you may feel like you bought at the wrong time and it sucks for a new player to have that feeling because i i had that feeling at some point where i sorry it started ramble on about another topic but you know the reprints themselves are one of those things where you might feel bad if you're a new player buying at the top because you're really into the game but at some point you're just going to get over that fact my bigger problem is the fact that if future um, cards that come out of Wizards of the Coast is going to have the same quality my last secret layers might have just been purchased so when I got these in, I have not made any more purchases of Secret Lairs. And, you know, I, I'm going to keep my eyes open to see if other people notice the quality issues. Of course they notice it. Look at these things. You had to flatten them out with a book and then they still curl up. If they notice that these are issues and Wizards of Coast actively fixes them, right to post, it becomes a deal. I'll keep an eye out for it. Um, and then we'll have to figure out if they're worth it again to purchase because... Once again, you're paying a premium on some of these. They're, good, they're for a good cause, sure, but you're paying a premium. And that means that you're expecting quality. So my hope is that Wizards of the Coast learns from this, doesn't have any issues, and, you know, they have to figure out what they're going to do for future prints, secret layers or otherwise. Because, yeah, okay, sure, printing double-sided on both sides doesn't really help as much as you think. So... Because not every set is going to have double-sided. But let's let's just have a quick... Uh, whoa, this is pretty impressive. Extra life. Extra life. Secret layers is... I mean... Okay, yeah, sure. I, I might just go straight back, <laughs> back there and put this straight on offer. But I'm not too sure if this is something that I want to help Wizards Coast profit from because of the bad quality and you know there's there's plenty of other cards out there that you know $60 could have done far better with so from my eyes I'm just like ugh, you know wait until Wizards of the Coast has solved the curling problem I know that it's a long wait maybe I'll only I, I think that I've heard that the Japanese printings don't normally have that same issue but I'm not too sure if that just means that it's harder to get them as well and maybe they have a premium on top of the premium but I don't think Secret Layers are printed in Japan. Anyways, also I wanted to do something interesting, which is at the very end, I wanted to just put out a... Because I was trying to set up my room. You can actually see it. It's a bit of a mess, but I tried to make it a bit nicer, and in the end it turned out even worse. But I want to show at least one of the uh, reserve list cards that I have, because it looks like you know people are allowed to flex with these things. So I'm going to start with just the crappest one that I have. Actually, you know what? If it's the crappest, then I'm going to just go with this. So I have Temporal Aperture. Yeah, that's right. It is too colorless. I'll actually get to this in the review at some point, I assume. Uh, but it's more expensive now than when I got it, obviously. Two colorless artifact. Pay five, tap, shuffle your library and reveal the top card. Until end of your turn, as long as that card remains on the top of your library, you may play that card as though it were in your hand without paying its, mana, uh, without paying its costing cost. Better ones a while back, but I never fully went into the reserve list and figured out what was in there so that's why i made the series in the first place it's kind of something for me and glad that you guys like it as well please like and subscribe i know i didn't say that at the st oh, maybe i did but i don't remember anymore please like and subscribe it really helps grow the channel and i'll see you guys next time have a good one